DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from Coast to Coast present... Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. Many of them say the secret word, they'll divide 100 bucks. The word tonight is hand. H-A-N-D. Okay, ducky. Mr. Fenneman, who's first? Well, oh, Groucho, Miss Marika Akasaki and Mr. Stuart Palmer are waiting to come in. They were chosen because of their occupations to be on our show tonight. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Marika Akasaki and Stuart Palmer. Now, which one is Mariko Akasaki? I am. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you uh, from originally, uh, Mariko? I'm from uh, Long Beach, California, but now I'm from Los Angeles. Oh. Are you married? No, I'm not. Have you somebody in mind? Uh... Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Mariko, what kind of a job do you have? I'm a newspaper reporter. You're a newspaper reporter? Yes, uh -huh. A sob sister, huh? <laughs> Which paper do you work for? Uh, the Rafu Shimpo. The what? The Rafu Shimpo. The Rafu Shimpo will uh -huh. coming and be <laughs> As a matter of fact, I know the Rafu Shimpo very well. When I was in Philadelphia, I read it every day. <laughs> in Philadelphia, everybody reads the Rafu Shimpo. Tell us something about this tear sheet, uh, Mariko. It's a, it's a Los Angeles Japanese daily news, and it's a bilingual newspaper, and uh, we have two front pages. What do you pages. mean bilingual? Is it male and female, this paper? No, two languages, Japanese and English. Well, are there enough Japanese in Los Angeles to warrant the publishing of oh, a yes, newspaper? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. now, what's the front page printed in, English or Japanese, we have, uh, like two the front, London Times? We have two front pages, a Japanese and an English. In other words, back to back. You have two front pages? That's well, right. how can you tell which is the front page? You can tell by the characters. <laughs> well, I'm a character, and I can't. <laughs> Sounds to me like your paper can't tell whether it's coming or going. It'd be great to read on a ferry boat. Works both ways. Yeah. Where are you from, Mr. Palmer? The Palmer House? No, oh, Baraboo, Wisconsin, where Ringling Brothers Circus also came from. Oh, what sort of work do you do, Mr. Palmer? I'm a writer. Oh, right. Did you work on the uh, shrimp boat paper? No, I didn't make it. <laughs> what sort of things do you write besides letters to the publisher asking for an advance? <laughs> well, I write uh, murder mysteries. In fact, I've written 18 of them. I've written 28 motion pictures and some 500 short stories all about murder. Certainly a jolly fella to be so... <laughs> well, what do you consider your best work of fiction? Before you answer, did you make out an income tax return last year? Yes, I did. Would you regard that as your best work of fiction? Apart from that, uh, <laughs> I think that any writer... Why are you so eager to skim over that? Those are delicate subjects. Yes, they are. As I was about to say, the, uh, my best work, I think, is the novel I'm working on. And I also remember fondly the Penguin Pole murder, which was some 20 years ago, and Cold Poison, which was published last spring by Mill Morrow, paid advertisement. President Wilson started this fad, didn't he? He was one of the presidents that read mysteries to calm his mind after the cares of state. And yeah. uh, Franklin Roosevelt did too. And I believe our present president does. At least I know that Mr. Writers of America sent him a shelf of mysteries. I hope he reads them. Well, he won't read them unless they're by Ben Hogan. <laughs> how long have you been writing mystery stories? 23 years. Mm -hmm. And in that time, how many people do you... Uh... Would you say you've bumped off? I'm not a bloodthirsty writer. I don't think I've killed over 500. <laughs> well, don't get discouraged, I'm sure. <laughs> a little ex more experience, you can do much better than that. In television, you know, we knock off that many in a week. Of course, that's only on children's programs. <laughs> Just out of idle curiosity, uh, how would you go about committing the perfect crime? Well, Groucho... Now, 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 just, wait a minute, just a minute. Three quarters of the people at home are out getting a pencil and paper. Just hold it. <laughs> you already out there? Okay.
Okay, shoot. <laughs> well, to bring it down to home, down. there are in every household two ingredients, which, if combined, would make the perfect poison which cannot be analyzed. I am not at liberty to mention the name of those ingredients in my books or over the air. Well, you don't have to tell us, Stu. Everybody knows the two common household ingredients that lead to murder. <laughs> A husband and a wife. <laughs> Time! March it on! <laughs> By the way, I heard there are more killers running loose than we realize. Would you, would you say this is true, Mr. Palmer? A famous criminologist once told me that every adult person who knows ten people knows a murderer. I think that's carrying it uh, a little far, but it's not too far off the beam. Hmm. Would you say eleven? <laughs> Have you done any serious studying of crime, uh, Mr. Palmer? Well, I've been lucky enough occasionally to work with the police and the district attorney's office and defense attorneys on big cases and to cover trials for newspapers as a feature reporter. And I have a library on true crimes and on uh, uh, legal jurisprudence and toxicology, that sort of thing. So I make a fairly sincere study of it, yes. I see. What do you think of Jack Webb's methods in solving crimes? I think that those stories are portrayed the ideal policeman, and there are some of them, better than anything I've ever seen on the screen, whether it's the motion picture screen or the television screen. He always solves the crime, doesn't he? But he does it by police methods that are legitimate, instead of by inspiration and tricks. Mm. I'd like to see him just once walk up to the microphone and say, folks, I can't figure it out. <laughs> he says, I'm, I'm just as baffled as you are. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to call in Ralph Bellamy. <laughs> I think it'd be good if one week he couldn't solve it, you know, just to show that he's human. <laughs> well, it's certainly been mysterious talking to you two. And now it's time to play your bet your life. Remember, we start you off with $100. You try to run it into as much as you can. If you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. Okay, are you, are you ready? Yes, and before you go into that, I'd like to say that I have another partner tonight. The National Jewish Home for Asthmatic Children in Denver is being cut in on anything I might win if I'm not lucky. Well. That's a, that's a worthy cause, Mr. Palmer, and I hope you win a fortune tonight. Small fortune. It's not overdue it. <laughs> now, you select a dictionary quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What do you want to start with? Start with a hundred. Start with a hundred? Mm-hmm. If you had a sobriquet, what would you have? S-O-B-R-I-Q-U-E-T. Nickname? Yeah, yeah, that's right, nickname. You've added a hundred dollars to your hundred dollars, you now have two hundred dollars. Now what are you going to go for? Eighty. Eighty? Eighty? What does the word, what, what does the word parsimonious mean? Stingy. That's me, Groucho Mark. <laughs> you now have $280. Now, what are you going to try? 70. What is a philatelist? Stamp collector. Stamp collector. Stamp collector. <laughs> you now have $350. And it's your last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? 50, I guess. 50. If you were an apothecary, what would you be? A druggist. Druggist or pharmacist, that is correct. <laughs> and you wind up with $400. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Right Before we go any further, I want to tell you about my trip to Europe this summer. I had my beautiful DeSoto with me, and we had a wonderful time. You can spot most tourists because they're always taking pictures. But not me. Of course, even in Europe, one of the prettiest sights around was my beautiful DeSoto. I went to all the cultural spots of Europe in this DeSoto. And even on those rough, winding Oxcart highways, I had a smooth, steady, enjoyable ride all the time. Here, I'm dropping a line to all my friends in America. And with power flight transmission and power brakes and that big fire dome engine, it was easy to drive from museum to museum. Fortunately, uh, I had no interest in museums. 
Driving that big, beautiful DeSoto was so easy and so relaxing. I felt like this all the time. Yes, it was just one round of culture after another. And driving a DeSoto all through Europe is quite an experience. Everyone who sees you comments on what a good-looking car it is. So, Europe or America, it doesn't make any difference. I don't think you can buy a prettier, better-built car than this great DeSoto. I wish you'd go down to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer and try one out for yourself. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Well, those are very interesting, Groucho, but are you sure you showed us everything that happened in Europe? Well, not quite everything. Sometime soon, when we have more time, I may show you some other scenes. But uh, now let's get on with the show. Well, Groucho, uh, Miss June Howard and Mr. Dick Prettyman are waiting to come in and talk to you. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Let's see now. Uh, June Howard and Dick Prettyman, huh? Nice-looking couple, man. Okay. Mr. Pretty Man, uh, tempting as it is, uh, I have no intention of commenting on your name. <clears throat> That's your cross, and you'll just have to bear it. That's <laughs> Miss June Howard, eh? I'll start with you. What, uh, what kind of a job do you have? I'm a policewoman. Uh, well, I'll see you around. <laughs> He fooled me. I never saw any look like that. Where's your uniform? How can I tell you really are a flat foot? Uh, some of my friends may want to know. Well, Groucho... Although most of my friends can spot a cop a mile away. <laughs> can you prove you're a policeman? Yes, I can prove it. No? I have identification, I have a badge, and a gun. I suppose if I want further proof, you'd shoot me, is that right? <laughs> no. I, would you like to be pinched by her, Mr. Prettyman? Well, it all depends. Uh, that uh, category might be all right. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, uh, pretty boy Floyd? <laughs> I'm a motorman and conductor for the Metropolitan Coach Lines. You're a motorman and a conductor? Mm -hmm. You must be pretty tired by the end of the day running back and forth like that. <laughs> what kind of a jalopy do you drive? We have a uh, three-car train morning and evening. They oh, each, each hold about 80 passengers each. Well, where is your run besides from the front end to the rear end? <laughs> from Bellflower to Los Angeles. Bellflower? Yes, sir. Have you made friends with any of your passengers, or do you, do you regard the day's work as just another cattle drive? <laughs> no, I've uh, made friends with all of them, Groucho, to, even to the extent that I know their birthdays, their anniversaries, where they live, where they work. Well, why are you so interested in obtaining all this information about the passengers? Well, it's, uh, it comes in nice on their birthdays or anniversaries. The ladies, I usually give a birthday card and a corsage, too, and... And you give the men, what do you give the men? Give them a birthday card and a cigar. Mm. And a card of sympathy if they're married? That's right. <laughs> well, that's pretty nice. What else do you do for your passengers, Dick? Well, we furnish uh, card tables for four seats. We have double seats in the cars. It must uh, be a nice trolley. I can imagine the signs on this trolley. <laughs> no talking to the motorman. Step back in the car and don't trump your partner's ace. <laughs> What do you think about all this streetcar gambling? Is it legal, or do you want to slap the handcuffs on them right now? Well, I don't believe it's illegal till the money passes hands. Well, they don't play for money, I think. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> you said money, so you get $50. That's the oh, secret word. And, uh, thank you. Dick, you get $50. The word is hand. What did I say? Money. Well, I, it, it really is money, though. <laughs> well, the time has come for some serious business now. You're going to play your bet your life. The first couple won $400, and the secret word is hand. We start you off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll, no matter what size it may be at the time. Is that clear? Clear. Are you ready? You select a geography. You ought to know a lot about that, driving back and forth the bellflower. <clears throat> and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, uh, what do you want to start with? Forty. Forty. Forty dollars. Now, one answer between you. Remember your partners. What is the name of the southernmost tip of the African continent? Talk it over. Cape of Good Hope. Cape of Bob Hope is right. <laughs> <laughs>
You won $40, you now have $140. My, what a mathematician this Fenneman is. <laughs> 60? 60. The Bahamas are a possession of what country? B-A-H-A-M-A-S. I thought it was bananas. Yeah, it's English. Yeah, it is English. Mm -hmm. English. English is right. You now have $200. Now what are you going to try? 200. Hmm? 200. 100. 100. The $100, $100 question. The rugged pass between Afghanistan and India, India, is famed in song and story. What is the name of it? The Tiber Pass. The Tiber Pass. In the well, it's the Kaiba Pass, Kyber. but that's close <laughs> enough, yes. <laughs> if you aren't a policewoman and I, there was danger of me being hit with a blackjack, I wouldn't have given that to you. <laughs> you won $100 that time, you now have $300. But with a fly cop, I can't afford to take any chances. This is your last chance to be the other couples. You have $300. What are you going to go for? Eight. I wish you'd go for me instead. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> which is it now? 80. 80. What is the name of the Grand Duchy that lies between France, Belgium, and Germany? France, Belgium, Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Uh, uh, Luxembourg. It's uh, Duchess of Luxembourg. Okay. Duchess of Luxembourg. Luxembourg is right. And you wind up with $380. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you ever feel... If you ever feel an overwhelming desire to arrest somebody, be sure it's me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're Thank right you. Me yes, up. I'm saying you're going I to like take to a have... ride on that <laughs> mudscow of yours, huh? Now, what have we, uh, George? Well, Groucho, we invited some scoutmasters to our program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Alfred Hadley. His uh, partner is a special guest, one that I think you're going to find very interesting. She's Miss Reinhild Olison. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet... Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Let's go, eh? <laughs> yeah. well, this is ridiculous, eh, coming back here. A man from the Boy Scouts and a beautiful girl, huh? Well, as much as I like the Boy Scouts, you may come in second tonight. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, Ren, uh, Regen, Hild, Olauson. Is that, is that how you pronounce your name? Yes, it's close to it. I pronounce it Ragnhild Olauson. Uh, Ren, Olauson, eh? <laughs> well, I can't keep you calling Olauson up here. I have a hard enough time speaking English. What do your friends call you? And I'm sure you must have many of those. They call me Johnny. Johnny, eh? Yeah. Where are you from, John? Imagine I... calling this John. <laughs> I am from a small town, and its name is Alling Sauce. It's close it's, to... It's called what? Applesauce? <laughs> no. <laughs> Alling Sauce. Well, you still said Applesauce. <laughs> no. Is you must listen apple? very carefully. I, I listen carefully. <laughs> Alling Sauce. I can't. I'm watching you so much, I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> Well, you're certainly a beautiful girl, uh, Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> How tall are you, John? I am one meter and 70 centimeters. <laughs> I'd be glad to meet her, but I wonder how tall you are. I am 5'7 in this country. You're 5'7 in this country, huh? Yes. How tall are you in Sweden, huh? One meter and 70 centimeters in Sweden. Oh. And how are you? How old are you, Johnny? I'm 19. 19. Well, uh, you're too tall for me anyway. <laughs> Mr. Hadley, uh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself coming out here at all tonight. Eh? <laughs> <You know. laughs> now I have to divide my attention there. You're not Dang. dividing mine. You're not dividing yours, no. <laughs> it's quite evident. Eh? <laughs> Aren't you a little old to be a Boy Scout? Well, I'm a Scout Master, Groucho. A Scout Master? Is that anything like a Shave Master? Well, we have little shavers in our troop, I guess. Oh. Are, are you married, Dad? Uh? Yes, I am, Groucho. How long have you been married? 
Oh, I think around 20 years. <laughs> I don't know for sure. You don't really care, eh? No. <laughs> Let's talk a little more about scouting. As a shave master, a scout master, what are some of your activities? Well, we have a troop meeting once a week, and we have uh, an overnight camp where we go out in the mountains and camp under the stars once a month, and we usually have a summer camp which consists of eight or ten days out in the mountains, and then we try to do a good turn for our community at least once a month. It's really a great organization. You know, we need more outfits like the Scouts. I never heard of a Boy Scout being mixed up in vandalism and gang warfare. I just want to say a word to all the parents in America. You want clean living boys and girls, or you want juvenile gangs? That's what it reduces itself to. Don't answer me, just send a contribution to your local Boy Scouts, because it's a serious problem today, juvenile delinquency, and these people are doing a great job in uh, stopping it. Could you tell us something about the Boy Scouts? For example, uh, how many are there? Uh, Mr. Well, Hadley. there's about uh, four million Boy Scouts and Scout leaders. Over four million little boys helping four million old ladies across the street. <laughs> no wonder traffic's in such a mess. <laughs> I want to ask you a question, uh, Mr. Hadley. Uh, how does a Boy Scout know that a little old lady wants to be dragged across the street? I don't think I ever saw a Boy Scout help a lady across the street. <laughs> Well, I had an aunt once who was standing on a corner waiting for a bus. This is really true, in the Richmond Hill, Long Island. She was waiting for a bus, and four times a Boy Scout took her across the street. <laughs> and she, she pleaded with him, but it didn't do him any good. <laughs> she finally sneaked into a cab and got away. But... <laughs> he was just about to drag her for the fifth time with his cab. <laughs> She was a sight by this time. As a matter of fact, she was a sight to begin with. She never did get back to my uncle. She joined the Bluebirds. But now she's the oldest brownie in Long Island. She's a brownie number two. She goes around taking pictures. Kiss me, you fool. <laughs> have you been in the United States, Johnny? I've been here for two months. Two months, huh? Mm -hmm. You speak English uh, astonishingly well for such a brief time. What are you doing in America, and how? <laughs> I came here to the Miss Universe contest to represent Sweden. Oh. Jumping Yemeni. <laughs> I want to congratulate you. You're a credit to Sweden and to Norway and Denmark. <laughs> How many girls were in the contest? There were um, about uh, 35 or 40 international girls, and uh, then there were one girl from every stage in this country. Uh -huh. And uh, how'd you make out? I was the five. You were, you were the five? Yes. You mean you, you came out fifth, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a fifth with a shape like that. Huh? <laughs> Well, it's been very interesting talking to you two, and quite pleasant. And now let's see how much money you can win. The first couple leads with $400. Now, well, this is a general information, uh, information quiz. Now, you can start with 10, 30, 40, 80, up to 100. Let's take 90. $90? Which of our 48 states is known as the Pelican State? I'm sure you've seen it on license plates. If you don't know, guess Florida? You're close. It's Louisiana. Well, you had a... got left. Well, they have 50 left. You had 100, you lost half it, you now have 50. All right, don't get discouraged now. What do you want to try this time? Oh, 20. 20. Mm -hmm. What is the correct time for the front end of a ship? Bow. Bow wow, that's right. You won 20, you now have $70. All right, now you have $70. Now what are you going to try? 70 you want to try? Mm -hmm. okay. 70. What do you call the loose outer garment worn by the ancient Romans? A toga. 
Toga is correct. You now have $140. Is your last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? Okay, let's make it $80. $80. What famous stage actress continued her great career despite the loss of a leg? Could you say it again? I doubt it. What famous stage actress continued her great career despite the loss of a leg? Um. Time's up. I'm sorry. Peters. Sarah Beinhardt. You lost. French actress. You lost half your one hundred forty dollars, and you wind up with seventy dollars. Thanks, and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealer. See you later, Johnny. Thank you. And that means. Miss Akasaki and Mr. Palmer, with their $400 in just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. <laughs> and here's the winning couple, Groucho, Miss Akasaki and Mr. Palmer, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Here we go for $2,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. For $2,000, what is the capital city of Maine? What is the answer you two have decided upon? I believe it's Banger. No, no. It's Augusta. It's a tough question. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Augusta, Maine. Well, they lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz, George? $400. Well, that's not too bad. Thanks and good luck to the DeSoto Plymouth dealers and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Remember, your DeSoto dealer sells two great cars. The outstanding 170 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome V8 and the beautiful 54 Plymouth, America's best buy low price car. DeSoto Plymouth, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on television. On radio every Wednesday night. And don't miss the big Chrysler Corporation TV show each week on another network. Fenneman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. Slow down at sundown. Remember, nighttime doubles traffic troubles.